Hello guys, I am Prerak and this is my second video in continuation to the previous one uh, where I'm teaching you how to make your own NFT PFP collection. So if you haven't seen the previous video, in the previous video, uh, I did this uh, environment setup uh, and I also installed the required libraries. So if you want to check out, you can check that out. And once you are through with it, we can uh, move on to this video. So let's start. So we generated all these images uh, in the previous video. And uh, now I have put them in uh, in a few folders. So you can see that uh, I have put them layer wise. So the background layer is different. Then we have the body layer and then I have the hand layer. These are all the images. And I've also uh, made a Python file called generator.py. This is where we'll be writing all our code. So before uh, we start writing our code, what we'll need is we'll need a a config file. This config file will tell the program in what way we want the images uh, to be layered. So I'll just start uh, writing the config file. So we'll this we'll save this file by the name of config.json. This is going to be a JSON file. And uh, we'll start uh, writing the code for it. First of all, uh, we'll just have an outer. Uh, header in this. Uh, so we just have two curly braces in the JSON file. Then we have the name of our first layer. But you should make sure that uh, you have uh, all these layers in the order that uh, you want them to be layered. So for example, the background is the bottom most layer, so it should uh, come first in the config file. So we're going to have an array. And inside the array, uh, you're going to have uh, all the images that you have. So we have four images. And then uh, you have to, so now what you have to do is you have to name all the images that you have in of a particular layer. And after that, you, you have to assign a weight to each trait. So I'll just uh, go with 25 here. You can think of it uh, as a percentage out of 100. So uh, let's say if I put 25 in all the images that I create, 25% of those images will be having this particular trait. Then we move on to the next image. I'm just uh, going with the uniform thing. Also, uh, for these weights to work, uh, I would uh, recommend you to have a large number of traits compared to the number of uh, things you want in your uh, NFT collection. So let's say uh, if you want 100 images in your traits, I would uh, uh, advise you to have a lot of uh, other a lot of traits, uh, a lot more than uh, that so combination should be somewhere around uh, 300 or 400 okay so i'm also giving it a weight of 25 because i want a uniform i have four images after that One thing that you have to make sure is that inside a particular layer, all these weights have to sum up to 100 because you are uh, treating them as a percentage out of 100. So, I, so I'm done with my config file and this is uh, what it looks like. I have assigned almost equal weight to all the uh, layers that I have. And you can also, you also have an option to put a none value so let's say if I, sometimes I do not want any trade, I do not want an NFT to have a hand. I can just put none here, but I'm not going this uh, with, uh, with that option for now. Okay. So now we'll uh, go on to our uh, Python program and uh, we'll start uh, importing the required libraries. This is a library, which we have already installed in the previous tutorial. Then we also need random and JSON. First, we are going to make two helper functions. First function is called combine. What it does is it combines the two images and it returns an image where image one is uh, image two is on the top of image one. Output is an image where image two is on top of image one. 
next we also need a function uh, for us to open images where we when we just assign a path to the image so then we convert it to rgba mode uh, we make sure that all of them are in the rgba mode okay so then uh, we'll write the main function of the program uh, which is called the generator function you need to uh, uh, pass a few arguments to this particular function. So first of all, you need to have a base directory. So this is the directory where everything is situated. Then you need uh, a directory where you are going to save all the uh, generated NFTs. Then you need to have a config file. This is going to be the path of the config file. And then the name of the NFT, the base name of the NFT. Uh, then we start with uh, this, uh, i equal to zero and we make a variable where we track all our uh, assets, assets that have been generated up till that particular point. And then we ask the user to uh, input the number of N uh, NFTs they want to generate. Okay, uh, you also want to open the config file. Uh, you have to open it in read mode and uh, you load the, do the data. Okay, so we have read the data from the config file and now we are good to go. We'll iterate uh, over everything n times. This is the process that we have to follow. First, uh, we have to increment this variable. So we don't, and then we instantiate two new variables, uh, current image and current data. So at the starting, our image go is going to be a none variable and current data is going to be an empty dictionary. Data is going to track all the uh, traits of your particular NFT, which has been generated. After that, you iterate over all the layers in data. This is obtained from the config file. And uh, after that, you add the layer uh, in the uh, on the top of the particular image that you have. This is going to be a function which we are going to write later, uh, but we are going to use it uh, here only. You also need to add, uh, you need to pass a few uh, arguments to this particular function. So first is going to be the data. Then you have to pass both the image and the data regarding and the current data of the image. This data is the data which we loaded uh, from the JSON file. Uh, after that, uh, you need to give information about the base directory and you also need to give information about which layer you want to be added in this particular iteration. Okay. Uh, and then after that, uh, so after this for loop has completed, at this point, our image and uh, uh, image has been generated uh, and we are tracking the data also. We need to check uh, if this uh, image is unique or not. So we'll, we'll be having a lot of images and we want to make sure no images are uh, uh, being generated generated twice because we because NFTs uh, can't two NFTs cannot have the exact same traits. So we make another function where we uh, put in all the assets and the and the current data of this particular asset. And let's say we find that the asset is indeed unique. Uh, we save it. Uh, so we need to have the to save it, you need to have uh, you need to put it in the base directory. You need to have a base name, uh, and after that, uh, you need to add which particular number this is. So I is going to be the NFT's uh, number. This is going to be the identifier. After that, you put the format uh, in which you want it to be saved. And let's say it is not unique. We decrement i by one because uh, one NFT is still left. Uh, and just for logging purposes, we print not unique. Uh, also, once you know it is unique, you also want it to be added to the list of already generated assets because you have saved it now. So you uh, add current data to it. And you also print i. This is also just for logging uh, pro purpose. This does not uh, serve any purpose. After that, you call the function. 
this is uh, this is our base directory after that uh, we have uh, the same directory let's make a new folder and uh, let's just call it test save we're going to save all the generated nfts here after that uh, we give the name of the path of the json file config.json and after that uh, which is the last uh, we give the base name so i'm just going to name it my nft okay so now we need to write all the functions that were pending so we have add layer which is pending and we also have uh, is unique which is pending so firstly i'm going to write the is unique function it takes two uh, it takes two parameters the first parameter is the current data then we have after that we have all assets So we are iterating over all the assets uh, present inside the all assets and we are assuming that it is not unique now we are going to check all the layers let's say a particular layer does not match uh, the same corresponding layer in our generated asset then we know that uh, at least one layer is different so it is unique it is indeed unique and we can break out of this uh, this uh, for loop now uh, outside this for loop if we find that it if it was not unique if all the layers were same then we know that we already have an asset of this kind uh, uh, inside uh, already generated before so we return false then at the very end we know that we have uh, iterated over all the assets so all our assets are uh, so all the assets are unique so we can just return true okay so this function we have uh, written now where is uh, this function we have written after this we are going to write the add layer function so it has uh, one two three four five. Oh, so it has uh, five parameters this is our uh, add layer function first is the data then we have the current image then we have current data, base directory, and the layer. Uh, for this, we are uh, going to make another helper function, which is going to help us choose the image. And you just uh, pass the data of that particular layer inside the helper function. So let's say we have now chosen an image. Uh, we need to check if it is a non image. Because I told you that there can be all there can also be an option where we you don't specify a particular image and you just specify none because you don't want anything in that particular layer. If it is none, then you have to add that store that info inside the current data variable and you can uh, return the current image because you don't want to do anything with it. This is uh, you just want it as it is. And if it is not none, uh, then you have to. Then also you have to store the data inside the current data variable. It's going to be chosen image. Uh, we are uh, we are doing this to uh, get the first element of the splitted array. Uh, the name is going to be the name of the file and then the extension. So we are just excluding the extension uh, in line number twenty eight. Okay. So uh, after that uh, we'll open the, this particular image. Uh, we're using the method which we wrote earlier, which is helping us open the image. We put the base directory, then we have to specify which layer it is going to be. Okay, so layer we can specify. After that, we have to specify which image we have chosen. Okay, that's it. And uh, let's say if uh, currently the image is none so this will be the case uh, when we are uh, adding the very first layer so uh, when we are adding the background layer it is going to be none uh, and in that particular layer uh, we are just going to add uh, now we, we're not going to add anything we're just going to return this uh, image we're just going to return temp and in case it is not none uh, we are going to return a combination 
of the image which we already have. It's going to be the current image and then the temp uh, file. This is the file which we have opened. Okay. So now only one function is left, which is the choose function, which we have written. Uh, we are going to now write this also. So this only gets the data of a particular layer. And uh, we are going to instantiate two arrays, two empty arrays. This is going to store the each the name of each image and also the weight of each particular image. So we are uh, iterating over all the elements in layer, so in that particular layer. And uh, we're going over the key. The key, the key here is the name of the image and the corresponding value of this key is going to be the weight of that particular image for key in element. So we are going to append the uh, weight in this, uh, in this particular array and key we are going to append in the other array. And in the weights array, we are going to append the key. Okay, so uh, here we are going to append the weight and the other one, we are just appending the key. And we also check the length of weights greater than one. This means that this is not the first weight which is being added, which we're checking for that condition. And if it is not, then we add the weight of the particular uh, of the previous weight here also. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to get a cumulative weight uh, up till that particular image. This is so th this why we are doing this because then uh, we are going to generate a random number and we are going to check if we should uh, we should check uh, we should pick which particular image. So for that purpose, it is necessary to have an array which has a weight of all the uh, previous images behind them. This this would help us to uh, use uh, to follow this particular condition which. Uh, weight, which Im uh, which particular image should come with the probability of what weight. So we are going to do this, and now we are going to generate a random number. This is going to be between uh, this is going this is going to be a random number between one to hundred, and then we are going to check our weight array. So let's say for the background layer, this is what the weight array should look like 25, 50, 75 and 100 because we are adding the weight of the particular layer behind it also. This is what it will be looking like. And uh, since we know what it uh, looks like, if uh, let's say the random integer comes in the range of 0 to 25, uh, we know that we have to return the first image. If it comes between uh, 26 and 50, we have to return the second image and so on. Okay, so this is going to uh, return a particular chosen image. And uh, I think uh, we are good to go. Uh, we have written all the functions. We can run it now. Just a second. Generator.py based. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I've actually put this inside the uh, all images function. Uh, I have to take it out.
Okay, so now it should work. It was actually put inside the all images folder. This is a syntax error. This is just a syntax error. Okay, so we are missing uh, a colon here. Yeah, so this is just an indentation error. We need to indent it this way. Uh, this happened because uh, I did not put that semicolon earlier. Okay, so uh, I need to add len here. So this is uh, this is going to be an array. We need to iterate over the length of this particular array. This is just a spelling mistake. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, uh, the program is working. We have uh, generated quite a few images. So we have a here, we have a red background, then we have a body, then we have a particular type of hand. And uh, this is uh, how you can generate uh, new images. So th this, this has a different body. Uh, let's try it again. Let's uh, try generating a different number of images. So uh, we know now for sure that it is also checking if it if the particular NFT is unique or not. If it is not unique, it just goes on gen and generates a new NFT. So thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, then you can just write it in the comment section. Thank you.